When I was a kid in the 70s, the BBC told me that werewolves were real. I'm not kidding. This is Hexham, a market town in Northumberland, recently named as Britain's happiest place to live. My first job in the early 90s was here, working for the local paper. Council meetings, theatre reviews, agricultural shows, the magistrate's court. But no supernatural monsters, sadly. Coal Shack reports the bazaar, the supernatural, the unexplainable. This story starts in 1971 here in Reed Avenue, where two brothers, Colin and Leslie Robson, dug up a couple of stone heads in the garden, as you do. According to the family, all sorts of spooky events then took place. When the heads were left in a room on their own, they apparently moved around. Let's move! Bottles were thrown around as if by a poltergeist. The young lad next door felt ghostly hands pulling at his hair, and his mum reported seeing a half-man, half-sheep creature. It's amazing how the young farmers club amused themselves in these parts. It wasn't long before the academic community took an interest, which is where the tale becomes even more bizarre. The heads wound up in the hands of Dr Anne Ross, an expert in Celtic artefacts, who took them to her home in Southampton. A long way away from here. Dr Ross appeared on the BBC programme Nationwide in February 1976 to talk about what happened next. This very respectable lady said she woke up one morning to find a half-man, half-wolf creature leaving her bedroom. She followed it out the room and watched it go downstairs, open the front door and walk out into the street, to the amazement of any passing nightclub or milkman I'd have thought. Days later she had to go into London, leaving her daughter to attend school for the day and let herself back into the house around four o'clock. At which point a werewolf appeared from an upstairs room leapt over a banister, retired into one of the downstairs rooms and somehow disappeared. When the heads left the house, the paranormal incidents stopped. And this being Britain, no one from the BBC thought to say, hang on Dr Ross, are you sure about this? This sounds nuts. Anyway, some bright spark at Nationwide thought it would be a good idea to end the report with a shot from a horror film. I think it was the bit in Curse of the Werewolf where Oliver Reed lunges at the camera. I can't be sure about that. All I know is that I screamed, bounded onto my mother's lap and sobbed in terror for a while because a news show had just confirmed my worst fears about werewolves. I also have a memory of the next evening's show where the presenter Sue Lawley apologised to all the parents who'd phoned in to complain. So for the next 44 years this was a hazy memory of mine. I remembered the terror of the werewolf of BBC Nationwide, but not much more than that. Then just before lockdown I attended a show by the two guys from Liverpool who write the Scarred for Life books about growing up in the 70s and 80s watching British TV. In the question and answer session afterwards I mentioned my childhood trauma, thinking it was probably quite obscure and they knew immediately what I was talking about. In fact, as I record this, a British ambient electronica group has made an album about it and a Belgian visual artist has made a short film. A couple of weeks ago, a blogger recalled the poop your pants terror of the werewolf clip and further back in time, an archaeologist blogger hinted rather heavily that it was all a load of hokum. You've heard of fake news. This, my friends, was shiver and shake news. Thanks for watching.